Hi, I'm Akash. Uh, I'm going to be giving a talk on top tips for ranking F1 jobs uh, with lots of advice, tools and other useful information. So I'm an endocrinology registrar. Um, I'm the founder of Mind the Bleep also. Um, the reason I set up was so I did F1 uh, back in 2016. God, it feels a long time ago. Uh, but essentially, uh, it was a bit of a difficult transition. Uh, you go from kind of theory, um, answering MCQs, sitting OSCEs, um, and then suddenly uh, you're in a situation where you have to do digital summaries, ward round documentations, you're in charge of patients, and the whole switch is very difficult um, initially. The other things that I love to do um, are cooking and baking, um, which as a diabetes specialist is not the best thing. <laughs> and then finally, um, I'm a ukulele enthusiast, uh, enthusiast because I literally picked the instrument up a month ago and I'm self-teaching myself. And I can only play three songs, so I'm very enthusiastic about this three songs, but um, what I can't say is I'm in any way an expert. So what is Mind the Bleep? Uh, Mind the Bleep is a medical education platform. I set it up uh, for free resources for FY1s. The reason being is that transition is quite difficult, quite challenging, and when I was doing it, I became the F1 rep, I ended up being the F2 rep, setting up uh, junior doctor forums, being the FY welfare rep, lots and lots of things to basically support F1s because I knew how difficult that was having done it myself only, only a few years ago. Um, and so what I set up was free resources, articles on common jobs like discharge summaries, TTAs, referrals, We've got a lovely referral cheat sheet, uh, which just makes the job so much easier. Um, managing on well patients. So what do you do when you're bleeped about somebody who's uh, got high sugar or um, is hypoxic or hypotensive, and then also how to manage your finances, sort out all the employment stuff. That's so challenging. To put that all in a lovely neat package, we set up a survival guide course, again, free, free weekly webinars on all the topics from medicine, surgery, pediatrics, finance, literally anything that you want, interpreting imaging, for example. And then finally, we also do free in-person uh, courses. If you're asking how we manage to do all of this for free, well, I give up. I work full time and I give up a lot of my evenings and weekends just to do this uh, because I enjoy doing it and it's a hobby for me. But also from a financial point of view, we're helped out so much by um, all of our sponsors who allow us to give all of this uh, content for free. So I can't stress how much how important indemnity is. Um, you must make sure you protect yourself. It's pretty cheap. I think it's like ten pounds for F one. Um, but what what you don't want to do is uh, be the very rare situation that you make a mistake or um, and have not have an indemnity provider who's looking out for you and looking to protect you. If you have any problems in F one, you want somebody that you can contact. Um, so make sure you get on top of that. This was my face um, back when I was given a massive spreadsheet of all of these different jobs, all of these different hospitals, all of these different places that I could work. And I was like, what am I going to pick? How am I going to rank all of this? And so 
what we're going to do, we're going to talk about today is factors to kind of help you consider the jobs, uh, some useful tools to make all of that so much easier and some other useful uh, resources. And then finally, the most important part is the question and answer. Lots of you guys have sent in your questions in advance. So thank you. We'll answer them. But if you've got any questions that haven't been answered, please just put a comment down below, whether you're on the article, whether you're on the webinar, whether you're on anything on YouTube, whatever, just post a question down and we will answer it. Um, this was for the live recording, but of course it's going to be recorded and shared because you're listening to the recording. Uh, so how does it work? Well, the UK Foundation, the UK FPO is a national process. F1s and F2s essentially rank nationally their jobs to work out where they're going to be. Because it's a national, nationally coordinated process, all the jobs basically need to be very similar. They need to have a good mix of medicine, surgery, community jobs, such that at the end of it, when you finish F1, F2, everyone's on the same level playing field when they're applying for specialty training or doing whatever else they're going to do. And so the jobs are very, very similar. They might not look like it on paper, but actually they are there to teach you very similar competencies, very similar skills, which are aligned to your curriculum. So do not worry about doing one job or the other. Don't worry about whether you've been placed where you want to be or not, or gotten your bottom rank job, because you're still gonna get a very similar experience and you're still going to get, uh, you're still gonna have the exact same career prospects as any single other person. Do not worry is the most important thing that I can tell you, because it does not matter. What matters more is your happiness. What matters more is the ability of you being able to do all the social things that you want to do and enjoy your time and congratulate yourself for passing medical school, being a doctor and all those important things. These are the three factors um, which uh, people rank as the top reasons for picking the kind of rotations that they do. Um, so these are the three things that you should think about when you're kind of ordering that spreadsheet, the location. Um, and this is the most important thing. Um, so particularly when you're, when you ask people, once they finished F1, F2, and you ask them, what was the most important thing um, that factored in into, in terms of, or what do you wish was the most important thing? And it's location, because it's about the cost of living, commute, being close to your family, friends, or being close to the things that you enjoy doing. That, that actually because you spend more time not at work than you spend at work and so you need to be in a place where, where you're going to enjoy outside of that the hospital and the job are other things that you need to do definitely need to factor in and what we'll do is we'll break each of these down bit by bit so location why is the location so important well the first reason it's important is because of the commute it is really exhausting to commute a very long time. Very long time depends on what, what you count as long for you. Uh, some people say 45 minutes, some say hour and a half. But the fact is, if you're doing a 12, 13 hour shift and you were taking one and a half hours to get there, one and a half hours to get back, that is a massive chunk of your day and you're going to be exhausted and not able to do the things that you enjoy. Another thing to think about are how you're going to get there, public transport versus driving. But can you drive? Um, well, if you can't, you, you, try, you don't want to pick places where driving is really the only easiest way to get there. And public transport is going to take a very, very long time. Um, finally, think about um, family, friends, commitments and socialising. So if, if going to the gym or swimming is really important to you, if you're part of a, a ukulele club, and you really have to get to that, make sure you factor that in such that it is easy to get to the places you want to be. Um, and also if you've got commitments for, if you've got children or any other commitments um, that you have, make sure you factor those in as well. The next thing to think about are living costs. And that's quite challenging because you may never have lived in the city that you're planning on working in. Uh, rent, uh, transport, food, utilities, and so what I've got are some awesome tools which can help you navigate through all of that. So Google Maps and City Mapper will tell you what the commute is like. Um, and you need to put in um, when it's busiest because that's the commute that you're actually going to be doing, the one uh, to get to work at 8 or 9 a.m. Uh, Numbeo.com, um, I'll, I'll show you that on the next slide, um, but that's about living costs. And then finally, go visit the place that you're going to pl plan on working in. The reason being is then you can see whether it fits with what you want. 
And if you can't do that for whatever reason, Street View is really helpful um, on Google Maps where you can have a look around that, that local area and just make sure that, that uh, it, it looks the part. So numbeo.com uh, is a place where you can put in the city that you're uh, planning on working in or going to, and it'll give you an idea of what the costs are. Um, so the estimated monthly costs without rent, uh, what the rent's gonna cost, um, how it's all gonna work, and it's really good for that. So check it out. You need to frame that in terms of how much you're going to earn. The amount an F1 earns is between 28 and 36,000 pounds per year. That will vary depending on what jobs you're going to do. So if you're gonna do jobs with lots of on calls, um, lots of working evenings, nights, weekends, uh, that you're gonna earn more for that than if you're not. The jobs with those kind of more on calls tend to be the ones in medicine and surgery, um, because essentially the medicine and surgical patients need looking after in the weekends and the evenings. Uh, for other more specialty jobs like paediatrics, obs and gynae, you don't tend to do that in F1 um, because they want a, a, a higher level trainee looking after those patients because they're more specialised. Uh, so you'll tend to do that in F2, but you won't do that in F1. That's important to think to, to know uh, because it will affect your pay. Um, on the lower end, it'll be £13.81 per hour. On the higher end, it'll be £18.92. And per month, that works out 1800 to 2200 per month after tax. So that's the actual money that you'll take home after the NHS pensioners, the student loans, the national insurers, the income tax. Note that the tax year is April to April. What that means to you is that initially up until April, you'll be paying a lower amount of tax. And then afterwards, it will go up. If you want to know more about how all of this works, just go to mindthebleep.com slash finance. We've got lots and lots of webinars that will cover that content for you. The hospital. Well, there's lots of factors that you can think about um, in terms of hospital. One is a DGH versus teaching. So DGH is your district general hospitals. They're your um, non-specialist hospitals. They're the ones where you rock up to A&E um, and you can have any single presenting complaint patients will will get sent to the relevant department and so what you'll get is lots and lots of common cases to learn from there's more independence uh, because they tend to be busier um, and as a result uh, you will have more opportunities to get involved with procedures get involved with uh, managing patients independently and also because they're simpler the teaching hospitals uh, tend to have patients um, which are much more specialist so whereas you'll see the, the patients you see every week in a teaching hospital, you might see them every year in a DGH. The benefit, though, is that there's a lot more supervision. Uh, there's a lot more support. But on the contrast, you might be doing a lot more administrative duties as a result. These hospitals tend to be more in central London. Uh, they often tend to be easier to get to. Um, so there's lots of different things to factor in systems uh, so for example my handwriting is not good um, and so I really hate paper-based systems and I much prefer electronic systems because then everyone can read exactly what I'm writing and I'm a much faster typist so that might be something that you might factor in and the way to find that out is to just post on the F1 groups uh, either of this year or last year uh, we're trying to get some moderators uh, for each of the groups uh, of, from people who've worked in that deanery last year to be able to answer those questions so please 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 ask any specific questions that you have within the deanery groups uh, so that we can try and answer them um the other thing to think about is whether you're going to work in the same hospital or a different hospital if you work in the same hospital for both years the advantages are uh, that you'll know the system you don't have to learn a new system you'll be able to do longer audits quality improvement projects which are great for your portfolio um, and get involved with the leadership things much more easily because you know the people to, to talk to. In contrast, um, if you do two different hospitals, uh, the advantages are that you will get a different experience, a different profile of patients, uh, learning new systems, um, learning, meeting new people. And if you don't like that first hospital, then you've got a lovely new hospital that you know that you're going to move to where, where it's a completely different set of staff. And so whatever the problem was, you're, you're okay. 
Other things to factor in are the facilities. Um, so the mess facilities, are, are they what, what you want uh, them to be? Is there that TV? Are there, are there those games? Are they stocked up with food when you're doing a, a middle of the night shift? Uh, canteen? Um, is it going to have the food that you like? These are important things because these are the things that actually impact you every single day. Um, other things to think about the workload, the supervision, the rota. And that's quite challenging um, to know all of that information um, and even ask that information. And so things that are really helpful are the GMC survey, but acknowledge the fact that things will change a lot. Your supervisors, your registrars, your SHOs will also rotate like you will. And so the amount of supervision that somebody gets one year, if, if they say it's really bad or really good, may be very different the next year. The tools that I like to use are the GMC survey and MESTI's uh, training navigator. So the GMC survey, essentially every year, we are asked to, to rate all of our jobs in multiple different factors. Um, and as a result, the GMC has a robust set of data to know what, whether the training is good or bad in a hospital and pull trainees out if, if it completely is below the standards of what, what is expected. That means that you know that your training is to be protected. And so you, you should have a good experience wherever you go, because the ones that had a bad experience should have hopefully been weeded out. Um, but you can also find out um, what, what's important to you and which hospital caters to that. So every single job, every single hospital will have this kind of a um, spreadsheet of data for you to, to use. This can be really complicated and a lot of information, which make it really difficult to interpret. So what I really love is that Mesty's uh, developed this amazing traffic training navigator, which presents all of this data in so much more easier way to digest. But let me not talk about that. Let me ask Mesty to talk about that. Hey everyone, my name is Ryan and I'm the health tech fellow at Mesty. And today I'm gonna to be showing you how to use our train navigator. So the first thing you wanna do is type in nav.mesly.com and this will take you to the homepage of our training navigator where I would recommend that you first make an account just because it's um, it gives you unfiltered access to everything, it's quick and it's completely free. So once you've done that, select the foundation school you've been allocated in the top left drop down box. So let's just say you've got North London. And then from here, what you can do um, is look at the map and it will give you a list of all the hospitals within that foundation school, which makes it quite useful to work out where everything is in terms of proximity to you. Uh, then you can click show all, which gives you essentially all the rotations at each hospital. You can also click specialty to filter everything by specialty or filter everything by hospital by clicking here. Um, it's probably worth looking at both, but just you know, whichever is most important to you would probably be the one that you should look at first. So if you value the specialty more than the location, then by all means go for it. So from here, let's just say we click specialty and we were someone who was surgically inclined. We'd want to look at surgery. Um, and then we get a list of all the hospitals that offer surgical rotations. So you'll see different rotations. With the hospital followed by the specialty. We can then look at the overall score which is based on these three domains so workload satisfaction and learning which in turn are based on the feedback from previous trainees in the gmc's national training survey and each of them take into account a different set of things so workload would be things like workload and teamwork satisfaction is like you know, how the foundation trainees found or how happy they were in their rotations and learning is a combination of quite a few things like the learning opportunities how those stuck to the curriculum um the supervision they got and so on if you want to find out more information about all of these domains and how the methodology and algorithm of our train navigator works you can go into our blog um which akash i'm sure will link and just scroll down to you know, what information is collected how are the schools uh what what are the schools and what do they mean and you just get a bit of a breakdown there so going back to the navigator just looking at these domains, the higher the score, the better something is. So if workload is high, it doesn't mean there's a lot of work. It actually means it's more manageable. So it's actually a measurement of like the most manageable workload. So a higher score is better. Satisfaction, um, 
needless to say, just how happy trainees were there and learning is, as we said, mentioned before. The overall score gives you a quick overview of all of these three um, domains and it's quite useful just to work out quickly which is the best hospital to do the specialty that you want. So if you were someone who was orthopedically inclined, just have a look for the TNO jobs and you can then compare the overall score and then look into a bit more detail. If you like one, you can always click um, the heart sign and then that will take you to my favorites and you can compare those later on with the ones that other ones that you've um, found. So that's quite useful there too. The other thing um, is you can also click hospital. And if you just say type in the location, so for me, let's just say I typed in N7, um, it shows you all the hospitals which are the quickest um, commute for you. And there's quite a few, so it's quite useful, um, especially if you don't want to be fighting traffic if you're driving or clicking this little filter here to see the public transport times as well. So um, I'm just going to point out that traveling after a night shift for over an hour, it's like Hillingdon Hospital if you lived in uh, N7, which is Islington, is would be hell. So <laughs> I would have you know, tried to pick stuff which are closer to me, but what you do is up completely up to you. And then you can also, with hospitals, break it down further uh, by the specialty to have a look at that. So if location is more important to you, that's probably something you should click. Um, but yeah, once you've made a few lists, you can, like I said earlier, you can check your favorites and compare it. But in essence, that's the training navigator. It just provides you with lots of schools that you can look at to try to narrow down your options and your choices. So I hope that's self-explanatory. Um, like I said before, there is this blog that goes into further detail and just explains what I have in a bit more with a bit more information and I'm sure Akash will link that um, but yeah I hope that helps lovely um, so what do I need to think about when I'm thinking about the jobs um, so all of them are going to be a good mix of medicine surgery and community jobs so really in all honesty you're going to get a good experience whatever you do Let's say, though, there is a job that you really, really want to do. Well, even if you don't get that job, you can do a taster um, in F2. So that comes out of your study leave budget. And so it doesn't even impact on your annual leave requirements. So you get 27 days of annual leave for the year. But also, in addition to that, you get study leave. And you can use that week to experience whatever specialty you'd like. Additionally, if you're still not happy, there are swap shops. And um, so each of those are designed per the deanery and every all of them vary in terms of how many jobs you can switch and what kind of jobs you can switch but what if you do switch you still need to make sure that your jobs have a good mix of medicine surgery and community do note though that the supernumerary jobs tend to be more relaxed so what supernumerary means uh those are the jobs um in f1 where they're very specialist and therefore your input is predominantly to observe and carry out a lot of administrative duties. So psychiatry, pediatrics, uh, obs and gynae um, tends to be jobs where you are supernumerary. And this means in addition to the number of trainees that they need to run that rotor safely. Um, however, it's a very different experience if you do it in F1 versus doing an F2. So as an F1 in obs and gynae, for example, um, you will be kind of supporting the day-to-day -day activities, not have much independence. As an F2, uh, you will be on the uh, Obzengaini specialist road and really getting involved with looking after patients um, during the day, during evenings, during nights. It's a very different job. And so it's important to factor that in, that if, if you want more experience and you want to get more involved with the job, have that in your F2 year than having met an F1 year. But also acknowledge that if you are going to be applying for a specialty, and if you're gonna be doing that straight after F2, then actually you do that in your first job of F2. You do that in November, so you'll actually not have experienced your second and third rotation in uh, F2 before you're already applying. The jobs that tend to be a bit more stressful are the surgical and medical jobs uh, because there's more out of hours commitments, you're paid more, but you're also working evenings, nights, weekends, and the, the workload is higher. 
Um, the GMC survey can give you a bit of an idea of that, but as you've already seen, the Nestle's training navigator seems to do that really, really well. And then finally, um, the foundation job rankers um, are another tool that you can use, which I'll go into in a bit more detail. So this is data from Nestle, um, which shows which specialty has the happiest foundation trainees. What we find here are the ones which are a bit more specialized, um, where there's a lot more kind of support, people tend to be a lot happier, where the workload tends to be a lot less, where the workload tends to be a lot higher, people are, are less happy. It's pretty sad that endocrinology is there, given that's my specialty, but here we are. If you work with me, I'll try and make sure you're happy. Um, and then what specialty uh, make you work the hardest? Uh, so the higher workload score means the less workload, so the, the, the more manageable the workload. And so those um, correlate very, very much similarly um, with, with how happy people are. Essentially, if their workload is more manageable, they are happier. Um, all of that is available on the Mestly uh, blog, so do check that out. How are you going to rank it? How are you going to get that massive spreadsheet and use all of that information that I have just told you to rank what is going to be first, second, third, fourth, fifth? Well, what you can do is you can, um, I think the easiest thing to use is the scientific method. The scientific method is saying that, look, I know that this is more important to me than this. So I'm going to rank a hospital that is close to me as 10 points and a hospital that is less close to me as zero points or well, whatever. Um, I'm also going to look at all the jobs and I know that I uh, want to do endocrinology and diabetes, a specialty. Oh, God, I had no idea what I want to do in F1, F2, but let's just say that. Um, well, then I want to do more medical jobs than surgical jobs or I want to do um, whatever. Um, and so you, you will put a higher score for those. And then you basically just sort it out by filter. This can be really difficult to do manually because there's so many different jobs. And so some of the easier tools that you can use are uh, MediBuddy's uh, Foundation Program Ranker or this Foundation Program Ranker. Um, and what you do here is you just upload that spreadsheet and uh, sort the filters out such that it gives you a ranking here. Uh, it's already downloaded the, that uh, information for you. And so all you need to do is just put um, your jobs in. I very much like them, not sure, don't care, don't want them at all, and then help it rank. Uh, this is a free resource. There is an extra paid bit for the uh, GMC survey data. Um, but given that you've got the training navigator and you've got access to the uh, GMC survey, I, I wouldn't recommend paying for that because I don't think it would add much more information. So it's a free tool, so do use it. Okay, I want you to post as many questions as you have on the website, on the chat, on um, in the comments, on YouTube, wherever you are, please post lots and lots of questions. Um, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna answer some of those questions live uh, because you posted, you've already sent me loads and loads of questions. Uh, but then afterwards, I will go through all of your comments and will reply to all of your questions. So please, as many questions as you've got. The one thing that I do want to uh, stress, though, is this will answer a lot of your questions, which is the FY1 survival pack that we've made with the team. This is a free resource. If you just go to mindofleep.com slash FY1 and put your email address in there, you will sign up to this and it will send you an email of the FY1 survival guide, which is an awesome document to have when, when you're in F1 and when you're preparing for F1, because it will give you all of that critical information um, and is made by F1s for F1s for free, because they were like, this is the information we really wanted. There's an FY1 survival course. Um, this is a kind of video course, which kind of guides you through all the key information you need to know. If you're not the type of learner that likes to read and likes to be talked to instead, there's also uh, top tips on FY1, uh, medicine, surgery. Every week you'll get an email with how to deal with emergencies, how to deal with common jobs, essentially the things that um, F1s have said, this is exactly what I want, this is when I want it. And so all of those resources will be available to you. And if you don't like them, just, just unsubscribe because at the end of the day, I make all of these res resources with my team for free in the hope that they will be useful. And if they aren't, then, then 
please tell us and we'll make them better. And the other thing that I want to just point out um, is the next step. Um, so on the 23rd of March, I am, I am one of the panelists at this, uh, at this show. And we're going to be answering, again, lots and lots and lots of questions. We're going to be talking about our personal experiences of F1s, F1, the things that we found difficult, the tips that we've learned along the way, all of that information. And it's going to hopefully be amazing. Um, and so thank you so much uh, for the Wesley and for organising this. Um, it's in collaboration with us because we're helping um, to, to, to set up a lot of the stuff. And all you need to do is go to mindofleet.com slash next step and there will be the event bright page for you to sign up for this event. Once again, completely free. So these were some of the questions that I was sent um, in advance. I was sent over 400 questions. So these were the most popular questions. Uh, but if you've got any more questions, please, please, please do ask. I just didn't want to make this recording endlessly long so that everyone um, could focus on the most important things. So does the order of jobs matter? Yes and no. So I think the two things that matter are one, um, if you do the job in F1, it's more administrative. If you do the job in F2, it'll be more hands-on experience. If you do the job earlier on in F1, um, you may still be kind of getting into things. And so you may not be able to do as many audits or projects as you'd like to. Uh, but that's not necessarily the case. Um, often the question here is, um, does it matter if I do a supernumerary job? Uh, and that's kind of going on to the next question. Uh, so doing kind of psychiatry or uh, pediatrics um, and then suddenly um, doing an acute medical job or surgical job and feeling, oh my gosh, I have no idea what I'm doing. The foundation program is designed for that. We know that's the case. We know that a third of the trainees are going to start on a, on a job like that and that they're going to rotate into a job uh, with medicine and surgery. And, and so us as your supervisors, as your support team, know this and are out there to help you and make sure that you settle in. And it doesn't matter what job you're going into, the first week to two weeks is going to be a bit tough. But that's okay. That's true of any job that you do anywhere in any industry. We are here to support you. So at the end of the day, all of us are working together to help help our patients. And so do not stress, do not worry, just ask for help whenever you need it. Which jobs have on calls? Um, so medicine, um, the surgical jobs, so those are the ones that tend to have the most on calls. And so they tend to be the ones that are best paid. How can I do a specialised job? Um, so people are often worried, um, I'm going to be on obs and gynae, I'm going to be in paediatric anaesthetics. How can I do that? I don't have the skills to skills to write a discharge summary, forget, forget manage somebody critically unwell with a specialist thing that I spent two weeks on in, in medical school. Do not worry. We know this. When I started my F2 job doing paediatrics and obs and gynae, they literally had a very long induction where they explained it. They told us, look, we expect you to uh, ask us questions all of the time and get support. You are there just because you've got that time, you've got that contacts, we will guide you through. And by the end of it, you will feel very comfortable and very ready to do it. Do I have to do an A&E job? We don't have to do anything. Um, but a lot of people feel that they have to do an A&E job to be able to locum in that afterwards. You do not need to. Essentially, so many A&Es are understaffed that they, they will take uh, people who have no A&E experience. And as long as you've got that uh, F1, F2 competency, you've got a range of managing lots of different medical and surgical and other specialist problems. And so you are going to manage to be fine in A&E. I think it's a really useful job to have uh, because I think it gives you a massive skill set because of how general it is. But in the same way, uh, GP does the same. It really gives you an idea and a perspective uh, of how to actually manage patients at the front door um, in a way that I don't think any other job does. It, it. Should I do GP? Um, well, 
Yes, um, I, I very much think like a &E, it it gives you a very, very good idea, but it is not a must have. Uh, essentially, you will work with a lot of GPs, whatever job you do. Uh, you can always do a taster um, in, in a GP practice. There's lots and lots of different opportunities. And then in your FY3 year, if you want, you could uh, spend some time in a GP practice. Should I do the specialty I'm interested in doing? Yes and no. I mean, it doesn't matter if you don't. Um, you can still get all the quality improvement projects. You can. It might just be a little bit easier if you do that specialty. But also, um, it gives you an idea by, by doing non doing specialties that you're not interested in it gives you an overview particularly if you're doing a general specialty at the end of this so i didn't do an endocrine and diabetes job during f1 and f2 i actually did more surgical jobs pediatrics i was a guy in the emergency medicine actually i did very very little in the terms of medicine and i thought that was great because it's meant that when i have when i'm looking after a pregnant patient for example or when i'm looking after a random problem which i'm often doing in medicine uh i can rely on my emergency medicine knowledge my obstetrics knowledge and other things to really help help me do do the best job for my patient what if i dislike my jobs so there are two times that you might decide them. One, um, before you even start doing them, because you're like, that's not what I wanted to do. I put, I put that as my bottom rank. I'm really upset about getting that. Well, actually, you'll find that when you do it, you might enjoy it so much more than you were expecting. And it's often the worries about doing a job um, that are much, much more stressful than actually doing the job. In contrast, when you're doing the job and you dislike it, well, I think that's really important to discuss with your clinical supervisor, your educational supervisor, everyone that you can to try and improve that job immediately so that you don't still dislike it. If you are still disliking it, well, you're only going to be in that job for four months. Time flies when you've also considered leave, um, the fact that you'll be having study days and other things like that. Time will fly, you will not be in that job for long. So do not worry, even if you don't like it. Should I stay in hospital accommodation? Hospital accommodation does tend to be cheaper. Um, sometimes, um, particularly if the hospital accommodation is, is massive, you'll be very close to people that you work with. Um, and so you'll be able to get to know them, talk to them, go and visit other, each other very easily. The commute is amazing. Uh, but also uh, sometimes hospital accommodation isn't that nice uh, just because essentially it's a lot cheaper. Um, so what, one of the things that I recommend is definitely looking at pictures, visiting the place and seeing whether it fits with you, seeing um, who is living there and having a chat on the foundation groups to see who else is living in the hospital accommodation, just so that you know if you are there that you're going to enjoy whatever the case you will enjoy f1 because there are endless socials um you literally every week everyone goes out um lots of evenings everyone meets up you ha often have lunch together you know each other uh, you're teaching together the fact is wherever you are you will very much enjoy it and i wouldn't stress i wouldn't worry in fact if anything i'd congratulate yourself for passing medical school or if you're going to sit that your final soon for being right at the end. This is a time for you to enjoy. This is a time for you to stress as little as possible. Thank you so, so much uh, for listening to this talk. Um, this is a QR code, which will take you to our feedback form on medal. I really much would love if you can post uh, some feedback because I will literally be reviewing every single bit of that feedback to make sure that we make this presentation better, um, if you have any suggestions in that in terms of resources that you want, ways that we can make the foundation groups better, anything that you want, please just tell us, because the only way to know what to do is if you tell us. So if you fill in that feedback form, I know it'll take you five minutes and that is a decent chunk of time. But it is incredibly helpful for us to make that experience for you better. And finally, please post all of your questions post them here post them on the youtube uh recording post them anywhere you can because we will get to them 
Um, and if there are any deanery specific questions, please post them in the deanery Facebook groups, because that's the best place for us to be able to answer it, because there we know that the experts should hopefully be there. 